get to here on NFL now. How about this this morning? Uh, New York Jets hiring Nathaniel Hackett as his offensive co coordinator. Uh, he got fired after one season as the Broncos head coach. As an OC, he's fielded a top 10 scoring offense three times as a coordinator. Here's the head coach, Robert Sala. On the surface, everybody's looking at what took place in Denver, but there's obviously more to, to him than that. Yeah, there, you know, uh, and you got to own it, right? It's part of the resume, I, and I get it, but, you know, uh, you got to have the discipline to look past recency bias. You got to be able to look past um, uh, the, 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 whatever you want to call Denver. Uh, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that he got that to Denver and he had that opportunity because of his life's work as an offensive coordinator and all the different things that he's done in this league and how much respect he's garnered throughout the league and all those different spots and all the people he's, uh, all the co uh, players he's developed in his career and the, and the, and the people that he's worked with. All right, so Robert Sal leaning into the situation in Denver. Our NFL Network insiders, Tom Pelissero and Mike Arafolo, both with us right now. Tom, you broke this story. Explain to me how this thing came about. Well, Mike, it really always made sense that Nathaniel Hackett was going to be the play caller for the New York Jets, even though, as Robert Sala said today, they interviewed over 15 candidates for the job. What he was looking for was somebody with experience in play calling, which Hackett had done in Buffalo and in Jacksonville, where he actually worked with Robert Sala for a couple of years. They wanted somebody with a familiarity with West Coast principles. Of course, the previous coordinator there was Mike LaFleur. Hackett had worked under his brother, Matt LaFleur, in Green Bay, so there's some similarities in terms of the offensive scheme that they're going to take over. And more than anything, they get a guy who's going to come into the building and they believe help them elevate this offense with what they fully anticipate to be a veteran quarterback in the room. With Hackett, you also get somebody who is extremely high energy. He has worked with a lot of different quarterbacks, hasn't always had top-level quarterback play, but he had the number two offense in the league in 2017 calling the plays with Blake Bortles at quarterback and was the offensive coordinator, albeit with Matt LaFleur calling the plays when Aaron Rodgers won back-to-back -back NFL MVPs. As for the identity of that veteran quarterback they might bring in, Mike, I don't know if you have any ideas. I believe Blake Bortles has retired. There potentially could be somebody else out there who might fit in and hack it likes a lot. Is 12 available? I believe it's retired, if I'm not mistaken, but I believe that that gentleman said that he'd be fine. Uh, letting Aaron Rodgers wear it. Number 12. Um, don't overlook Keith Carter. The addition here, they announced the Jets did simultaneously. Uh, uh, Nathaniel Hackett as offensive coordinator and Keith Carter as O-line coach slash run game coordinator. I had heard early in the process that was something they were looking to do to kind of sort of split the offensive coordinator job. I mean, look, a lot of teams do that. They have a run game coordinator, passing game coordinator. But to have these guys work in collaboration, to have the best of both worlds, for a guy that just came from Tennessee, where they've been running the ball uh, extremely efficiently to work with Nathaniel Hackett, who, much as Robert Sala acknowledged, things did not go well in Denver. But a lot of those things you can chalk up to being a head coach versus being an offensive play caller uh, and play designer, although that part wasn't great either. He said, you got to own it. So he was fine with Hackett owning it in the interview. And they feel like they've got a good combination now to move forward with whatever quarterback would be playing for the Jets. It's a little bit of a polarizing conversation in, in the Big Apple about this quarterback spot. Uh, regardless, we know who now will be calling the plays in New York. Guys, always good stuff from both of you. More from both of you guys coming up in just a moment here. Here's some of the rankings. I used the word polarizing. There were some games where it looked really good, some games where it didn't look good at all. I don't even know if this is a good job just based off of the unknown when it comes to this quarterback spot. But Baldy, you heard about this story. You were like, I actually like this. I feel like I've known Nathaniel Hackett you know, like my whole life. I played for his father, Paul, when I was in Dallas, I mean, many moons ago. But I know him when he was just, when he's little. I, I worked with him the quarterback collective with high school quarterbacks uh, and high school talent. And I've seen him in front of the room. I've been in the film room. To me, he knows the game. I mean, one of the reasons why he got the job in Denver was the endorsement of Aaron Rodgers and how valuable he was to, you know, the, the success that he had in Green Bay. Uh, he, look, he, he worked with Robert Sala. He was the offense coordinator for Doug Marone in both Jacksonville and Buffalo. They both turned programs around when he was there. Uh, the quarterbacks all upgraded their games when he was there. I think they needed to upgrade the coordinator position in, with the Jets. They've got a ton of young talent. Yeah. Brees Hall's coming back. Garrett Wilson might win the offensive rookie of the year. Uh, they've got to put the offensive line together. That will make every offensive coordinator better 
whether it's Mekhi Becton getting healthy and coming back. But you know, that's Joe Douglas's job this offseason is to fix the offense line. If they do that, there's a lot to work with in, in New York. And I believe that Nathaniel Hackett has what it takes to get this offense moving in the right direction. Yeah. Mark, what did you make of the move? Uh, it was a, quite a surprise for me with the Nathaniel Hackett move, especially since what happened last year in Denver. But Robert Salah talked about the whole track record and – we can kind of go back and forth on actually how great the track record was prior to even Denver in Green Bay not calling the plays. Jacksonville with Blake Bortles kind of having one okay year, but definitely a surprise. Hey, look, New York is polarizing. And just using New York as an example of Brian Dayball with the Giants, that's kind of what the Jets would want Nathaniel Hackett to do, where Brian Dayball got Daniel Jones to play at a good level, uh, excellent games here and there, get the Giants to the playoffs. So I think what the Jets are trying to do is emulate the Brian Dable formula, you know, right there in the same stadium to get Zach Wilson going and, and revitalize his career, still, still very young, or if it's a bigger picture, bigger play has been talked about with Aaron Rodgers, getting him there, using him as an attraction. But we saw how that didn't work with Denver, with Nathaniel Hackett getting hired, possibly to get Aaron Rodgers there, but that not working out. So on the positive side, you're looking for a Brian dayball s resurrection of Zach Wilson uh, there with the Jets with Nathaniel Hackett. On the negative side, we know their Jets fans are some of them are too happy with it, especially with the recency bias, as Robert Salah said. Yeah, it's a good comp there, you know, because to your point, Mark, if it does look like what the Giants have been able to accomplish in year one with Brian Dayball, that defense, we already saw it on display. The Jets, if you make it to a postseason, you got to be kidding me. I think Gang Green, man, that fan base would absolutely be going berserk. So at least one spot fully now in the books with Nathaniel Hackett being named the offensive coordinator of the Jets. The